What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to automate unit testing in Java using artificial intelligence or as we have come to know it, AI. Now there are many benefits into incorporating this new breed of unit testing inside our project. We spend a lot of time producing these unit tests. Now they have great value, right? But we uh, are investing great amount of time for that value and our employer is investing a lot of money per developer per year in order to produce those as well. So it'd be really nice if this AI generated testing would help us by backing us up by creating another army of tests that are more geared towards you know, analyzing all code branches, things that we don't really have time to do all the time. Right? We always have to strike a balance between writing every single possible test and getting the code out the door. So it's always a balancing act. So, so just by using this AI generated tool that I'm gonna show you, you can create an army of tests that is gonna dramatically increase your code coverage within a day, okay? So that's one big uh, advantage to doing that. The other one is cost. All right, so the cost of not having to write those tests. If you have an application as well that has no tests, and believe me, I've worked on projects like that, where you have no assurance, you have no safety net moving forward. So AI testing in this situation is gonna create right, all those regression tests and be able to act as a safety net for us. I also don't have to tell you how many times I have missed a test case, an edge case that I didn't think about, right? Well, this AI generated tool that we're gonna incorporate, this project that I'm gonna show you in a minute, is gonna be able to analyze every single code branch and so it will generate those edge cases. First thing you do is you get from VCS over here and then you're gonna enter this uh, URL, minimize this over here and let me just clone this right now. All right, so this is great. Now we have our project up and running and we're ready to go. You'll notice the absence of a test directory. There is no test directory, there's only a Java directory. Thus, we're covering a scenario here in which we might have a legacy project that has absolutely no you know, safety net in place. But this does raise a very important question. And that question is this. Do I still continue writing my JUnit test now that I have artificial intelligence running the show, right? The answer is yes, you still need to do it. Now, why? Well, because only you can really identify at this point in time what unit test has the most value from a business standpoint, right? AI is not uh, smart enough or not as smart as you to identify those very high value tests. What it's really good at doing is identifying, like I said, those edge cases, that utility code that you spend so much time writing yourself and at the end of the day might not even write because it's just too much time or too expensive to do so, right? So use it together in conjunction with your unit test to add an extra layer of safety for you. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna show you right now how to incorporate AI generated tests inside your project. So in IntelliJ, I'm gonna say Control Alt S and I'm gonna to go to the plugin section because we're gonna need a plugin to do this all for us. And there's a company by the name of Diff Blue that's come out with a community edition of their product, which is this one here, Diff Blue Cover Community Edition Unit Test Generator. This is the one we want. I've already installed it. If you want, you know, and if you really want step-by-step -step how to do this, you can take a look at the blog post on mvpjava.com. Over here, I'm just gonna say cancel because I've already installed it. And once it's installed and the ID's restarted, you can see here you got a Diff Blue menu. Now, Div Blue is not your run-of-the-mill static analysis tool that's just gonna create templates of tests. That's not what this tool is all about. This is really AI at work over here. So we can go and change our settings if we want to, but right now, honestly, we work just out of the box. What I've done, the only real change I've done, is I've added this Div Blue to the test name because by default, you'll see that it's actually going to be just test when you install this, right? So you won't be able to visually see what the difference between is your test class that you're still going to keep on writing, like I said, versus the AI generated one. Now there's some other settings for in terms of, um, you know, the text formatting and the verbosity in terms of, um, you know, Java docs and all that kind of stuff. It also supports Spring, which I'll do that in another, um, in another video. So if you're using, let's say, Spring Boot or just a Spring Framework, if you want to activate some profile, so a subset of Spring Beans inside your application context, let's say for dev or test, 
uh, or prod or something like that, it supports that as well, which is really cool. The other thing which I've changed in this case is the testing framework. DeathBlue covers JUnit 4 and JUnit 5, or it could auto-detect. By default, it comes auto-detect, but I've actually made some changes because I love JUnit 5, right? So we're going to take a look at some auto-generated AI JUnit 5 tests that are going to be pumped out over here. Then after that, we're going to see there's a tool for cold coverage, which I'm not going to enable in this tutorial, but you can have a go uh, and take a look at that. So you press OK. I'm just going to press cancel because everything's set up. Now, I could, you know, go and create these uh, AI generate tests for the whole project, but I don't want to bury you in an ocean of tests. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to look at a single class, right? And we're going to say, well, we want to generate tests for all this class over here. We don't want to have to, you know, generate. We might say, hey, we're going to write our own JUnit test. We're going to identify one high value test and the rest you want AI to generate, right? So right now the scenario we have, we have no test. So we're going to use the diff blue uh, cover CE version of the plugin to generate this for us. The nice thing is that you could even generate just, let's say, the method. So for example, if I take this method and I right click it, I could actually just write a test for the diff blue cover with write test over here. Or I could go to the tab over here, right click and say write tests. Or I could go over here and click here and say write tests. You know, you choose, you choose your preference. So I'm gonna actually do it from here, write tests. Now it's gonna go off and it's going to create a whole bunch of tests for us. Okay, fantastic. So we're done. You can see here in the event log, it says it's created 12 tests in total for those eight methods. So we just saved ourselves a whole bunch of time having to write those uh, 12 test methods. Now, if we go take a look at the uh, new testing directory that got created in our IntelliJ project, we can see here underneath account diff blue test that there's a whole bunch of tests that have been automatically uh, generated for us through AI, right? So you could also see that it's using JUnit 5, which I said is what I wanted to use, right? And one thing that is very surprising is that this is very human readable. Like you would think a, a human wrote this, right? It's not one of those simple static analysis tools that just spits out kind of template-ish tests. So you can see that it uses real values and, and real names and the way things are constructed are very logical and can be read and understood very, very well. Right now, again, you don't want to stop writing your own high value tests, but these kind of tests now, you don't have to uh, spend lots of time and money indirectly. Right? So now that we have a safety net, let's execute that safety net. Let's run these tests and make sure that we have a baseline in which we can now modify the code and move along with um, more confidence and obviously Right, all these tests pass. Now it's important to note that these AI generated tests will validate the current state of your application, right? It's only as you start making changes that it will regenerate the test to mimic or to represent the current new state of the application. So you can then execute the past, right, or the previous test and the new test and see if there's a regression. So let's cause a regression on purpose, all right? Let's say we come in here and some code changes were made. Uh, let me identify here. There's one in particular that could be a little nasty. Let's take take from balance, right? Where you pass in an amount, it's taken from the account and then there's an assertion that takes place. Now over here, the current balance uh, will be used and whatever value gets passed in, let's say $10, will be subtracted from that, hence the you know, minus equals. Let's do a little insidious bug here and say equal minus, right? So visually, very hard to um, catch that, maybe even during a code review, right? So let's see here, if we save this and we rerun the test, what happens? But let's see now if something actually fails. So it's gonna go off. And again, this is our safety net, right? And it's identified a regression, right? We've changed the state of our current application and that no longer mirrors the state that was represented by these unit regression tests that were generated for us, right? So now we need to go in there and figure out why this test is failing. So let's say I come in here and I just wanna generate 
let's say, a test for this. So we're going to say write tests, right? I only modify that method. Let's see what's going to happen now. It's going to go off. It's going to, again, analyze the Java byte code. It's going to analyze your source code, and it's going to implement those machine learning algorithms to generate this new take from balance uh, unit regression test that now mimics or represents the new state that you've introduced. So AI here in this case is not, you know, smart enough to know, hey, that's wrong. It says, cool, well, that's what you want to do. Great. I'm going to write a test for that for you to, su to be supported, right? So take from balance now, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of other tests that have been written, right? If we go take a look at the event log, let's go that we can see here that it created a new one, test three and test four. So test three and test four now, if we rerun the whole suite just to make things, you know, a little easier to uh, digest, we'll see that those new tests are definitely going to pass, right? And the reason they're going to pass is because it wrote, AI wrote those tests, right, to represent that new behavior, that new state. However, the old state, right, is still failing. And this is where that regression testing is getting caught. So I just want to finish off and say that there are huge, huge benefits into incorporating these AI generated unit tests inside your Java application. Okay, so it's a good time to get involved in uh, incorporating this in your project so you can evolve with the technology. Now, what else would I like to say is that um, this plugin, right, because we're using the community edition, does have some limitations. And those limitations have to do with that you cannot use uh, the diff blue cover tool on the command line or a, uh, automate it inside your CI pipeline. You need the paid version for that. So the tool does have those limits. That's why it's a community edition version. Other than that, I would say start off slow, gain confidence with the technology. There are other companies, big companies that have incorporated this plugin into their project and they've seen dramatic improvements in the quality and also have caught regressions. And so overnight, they've increased their code coverage dramatically and also have cut down a lot in terms of cost and time to market. Please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell. I'm gonna be coming up with a series of Java and AI in terms of this unit testing. I think this is a good time for us to evolve with the technology. As always, subscribe to the newsletter on mvpjava.com. Only members get exclusive articles and tips. You're gonna see every once in a while, you're gonna come across an article that has, for example, a password, right? And so that password is only going to be known to you if you are a subscriber to the newsletter. It doesn't cost anything. You only get extra stuff for free. All right, guys, I'm out. Until the next time, I'll be getting the next one ready. Cheers.